There are a few different ways to install WordPress onto your server. While I will always prefer the easiest way for most anything, I would also like to know how things work just in case something requires fixing. I can then fix it myself or have someone else fix it, but at least at that point I'll know what they should be doing to fix the problems and this minimizes me getting ripped off by somebody overcharging me for work that was not needed in the first place. Now if you head on over to WordPress.org, that's where we are right now, and download the latest version of WordPress in order to install it yourself, they have what's called the famous 5 minute install. Let me show you where that's at. Just click on right here, and at the time of this recording, version 3.5.1 is the newest version, and that's going to be changing here in a few weeks, but the installation process will still be the same for the most part. The handy guide right here, this link will take you to this page for installing WordPress. And there's a whole lot of cool details on here you might want to check out when you get a chance to that I'm not going to be covering in this video. But right here is the famous 5 minute installation guide I was referring to. Now this covers some things that frankly I'm going to go against the grain on in this video because the way I'm going to be showing you will install it a little bit more securely. But their way will work but then you have to go back in later on and do some tweaking to get it to where I'm going to be showing you. So avoid a couple of steps, save some time, and do it this way. Now at this point, I'm also going to mention that uploading the files, there's a little over a thousand files in this zip file here for the new installation of WordPress, and that will take, on my internet speed, it'll take a little over eight minutes, about nine minutes to do. So I'm not going to include the uploading of the files in the five minute time limit that I'm putting on myself here because that basically depends only on your internet access. If you've got DSL or if you've got dial up or if you've got like my neighbors in Kansas City have Google Fiber, then your upload speeds will vary accordingly. So again, I'm not going to include that in my five minute time limit. The one thing I do want to mention though, as far as uploading, I'm using FileZilla and I've logged into my FTP using a secure connection, that's SFTP. And that's just an added layer of security. It's by all means not necessary or mandatory, but it's just an added layer of security to be able to log in using SFTP versus the normal FTP. What we were going to do is whenever you download that file from WordPress.org, it's going to come in the form of a zip file. When you unzip it, inside of it is going to be a folder called WordPress. You want to uploading the contents of that folder, not the folder itself, to your server where you want those files to be located at. For example, if you want your WordPress site to be brought up on the browser whenever you type in just your domain, then you want to put it in the root directory, in this case public underscore HTML. If you want it to be like you put in your domain name forward slash blog, then you want to create a directory called blog and then upload all these files into that directory. Pretty simple stuff. The only thing that I'm not going to be showing you here is the time involved in uploading all these files because you see here it's a little over, little over a thousand files. So anyway, uploading it, not that difficult to do. Let's get FileZilla out of the way here. Okay, so now I want to go over to our cPanel control panel to create our database. But first I want to pull in our little timer here so we know that we're going to accomplish this in under five minutes. Go ahead and start that up. Come on down here to our databases panel. And you can either use the MySQL database wizard, which we're not, or just go into the MySQL databases, which we are. And we want to put in here the name of our database. And you can have whatever you want in there for the most part. It'll tell you if you mess something up. But I also create my usernames using the same name as my database. It's not mandatory, it's just what I do. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the database name here. And I'm also going to paste it here because I'm going to use the same ending of my name because all this is the actual name all this is the actual username I'm going to use that same ending for our username so let's come on back here come on down here paste that or not paste it but put that in there like so use the password generator and usually I'll use that one you can also click here to regenerate a new one we need to check that box there saying that you've copied that into your clipboard, use that password, create that user, get that out of the way, click that again, and there we go. Now I want to copy this 
but I don't want the period at the end there. That always throws me. Copy that for my password. Paste that there and go back. Now that we've got the username and the database name created, we now need to associate the two together. Make sure that they are both showing here, both the user and the database. Click on Add. Click on All Privileges. Make Changes. And we're set. Our database is ready to roll. Now then, at this point, we're done with this guy here. But I wanted to show you, if we come on back here, and if we go into File Manager, which I believe I already have opened up here, if we come on down here to the Config Sample, it's at this point that I tend to differ with what's explained in the WordPress installation guide because here they want you to change the name of this to just config. They want you to delete the dash and the sample and inside of here they want you to let me open that up in an editor. They want you to actually go through and create these keys here but there's an easier way to do that where you don't actually have to create those keys. They're done for you. Let's go ahead and close this out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're just going to leave that alone and we come on into our index here and let's just refresh that and right here it's going to create the configuration file for us. It's going to create that config file for us with all those security keys intact. We don't have to mess with that. I mean you could always go back in and change those if you want but why do it? Let's save time. Create config file. Now that we want to make sure we got all this stuff which we do right here. Go ahead and let's go. Let's go ahead and copy this here. That's the DB name and the username. Copy, paste, paste. And you see how I'm pasting both the beginning and no period? Okay, just want to make sure you were aware of that. And the password, make sure we get all of that, but not the period that was at the end there in cPanel. And paste. And unless your host is something other than localhost, leave it alone. Now here is another security measure that they don't really tell you a whole lot about. I'm going to change the database or the table prefix to something else. Because hackers know that it's most always going to be WP underscore. Let's change it here to DTWTO. Yeah, that'll work. Underscore. Click on Submit. Run the install. And we're almost home free. Site title. And admin, we want to change that to something else. Password. Let's go ahead and th throw something in here. There. How about that? Copy. And it tells you, actually, let's just leave that blank. Let me just show you because it will make it for us. Your email, you got to put that in there and then install WordPress. See it made the password for us nice and secure. Copy that down. Log in. I'm running closer on our paste and there. So technically we were right at five minutes and I've not been yamming around it would have been much less than that. That's how you can create your WordPress site manually and do so in this example right at five minutes but in most cases if you're not having a talk you can do so in less than five minutes. Let me go ahead and show you what the site looks like real quick and click on that and here we are my blog and you can always change this stuff inside of the back end here but our site's created that's it. That's how you can manually create your WordPress site in under five minutes or in this example right at five minutes. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. There are a few different programs that are what I call one click installers. The old guy in this group is called Fantastico Deluxe and you'll get these in your cPanel control panel. I've already logged into this one here at HostMonster and I prefer using basically anything other than Fantastico Deluxe, but not every hosting company offers anything other than Fantastico Deluxe. Now all the one-click installer programs provide you with the same end results, and that is a fully functional WordPress site. The one I'm going to be demonstrating here will also provide you with a couple of added security options at the installation level that you would otherwise have to dig into the code or install plugins to achieve. Now. 
the one thing here that I want to mention is that another one-click installer program in addition to Fantastical Deluxe that's offered here at HostMonster is called Simple Scripts. I like these guys even less than Fantastical Deluxe. So let's just get out of here all together. In this particular hosting company, they provide one that I am going to be demonstrating with here that I simply love, and they're called Softaculous. Now, when you log into your cPanel control panel and go to the Software Services panel, if you do not see Softaculous, then go ahead and contact your hosting company if you want to and see if they'll install it for you. I mean, it's very inexpensive. As a matter of fact, I had this one installed here for this dedicated server for two bucks a month. Now, if you go to the Softaculous website, you'll see that they charge even less. I think they will even charge like 70 bucks or something like that for a lifetime license. So, you know, if you plan to stick around with your hosting company for any length of time, that brings it to even less. What I want to do, though, is go ahead and log into here. But before we do that, I want to bring in a notepad and note these three items we're going to record in this particular one-click install process. And I want to bring in our little handy dandy timer here so we can show we're going to do this in under five minutes. Let's go ahead and click on that to get the timer started. Click on Softaculous to open that up. And we want to click on WordPress here to get things started. Click on Install. Now I want to get rid of this right here because right off the bat by default they assume that you're wanting to install your WordPress site in a directory or subdirectory called WP. You can put whatever you want in here so long as it does not exist already, but I prefer, at least ways in this demo, to install WordPress on the main domain. You also have the ability to change the database name right here, but by default it looks pretty good to me. Here's the kicker. This is what separates this guy from the rest of the one-click installers, in my opinion anyway, and that is the ability to rename the table prefix right here. By default, it's WP underscore in most any other installation process, and the hackers know this. So let's make them work for it. If they're going to try to break into our site by using some kind of an SQL injector or something, well, they're not going to get there by using WP underscore. Name it whatever you want. Make sure it ends with an underscore, though, and you're good. So I want to go ahead and copy this and paste this on my record right here. Then we come on down here, the site settings, the name and description. You can name this whatever you want. You can also change this later after the WordPress installation is done. You can log into the back end of your WordPress site and make all kinds of adjustments there, these two being a couple of them. Now the admin account. Here you want to change the administrator username from the default admin to something other than admin. Make it something easy for you to remember, hard for somebody else to guess. but just make sure it's not admin. Now the password here, it should be, and this is just my opinion, it should be no less than eight characters and somewhere right around 12 characters or more. But you should also mix things up. Use upper and lower case letters, throw in some numbers, and a couple of at least a couple of the special characters that you'll find by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and hitting any of the numbers up top there, like the percentage sign, the ampersand, the asterisk. Try not to have any dictionary type words because there is a program out there that some of these hackers will use that will just go through all the words in the dictionary until they come across yours. So make it hard for them to guess. So let's throw in a few letters, a few numbers, a couple of uppercase letters, and some special characters. There, if they can guess that, they can have whatever I've got in my site. Let's go ahead and copy this, paste this here and we're solid we're good to go now the administrator email make sure this is an email that you actually have access to and that you will receive emails at change the language if you want you've got some advanced options here if you want to check into those but that's just not that much so i'm not going to mess with that click on install and that's it i mean it's gonna it says three to four minutes but usually it's just a few seconds and boom we have a new site Go ahead and check this out here. Check this out if you want to log into the back end and apply your copied username and password to log in. Let's check out our site. Pretty plain Jane, but we're ready to roll. That is how you can make a more secure WordPress install using the one-click installer called Softaculous. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day.
One way to help keep your WordPress site secure is to only use secure file transfer when transferring files to and from your WordPress site. Now, if you are manually installing your WordPress site using an FTP client, you know, kind of like FileZilla, like what I'm going to be demonstrating with here, then only use SFTP. That's S as in secure, FTP. Now, if you are, for example, prompted within your WordPress site to supply your FTP credentials in order to update plugins and or the WordPress files, then instead of doing it that way, go ahead and use your outside FTP client like FileZilla and only use the SFTP option. Now in this demo, I'm going to show you just how easy and fast it is to set up the free FileZilla FTP client software for secure file transfer. Now I've already downloaded, installed, and opened up my FileZilla program. Come on up here to file. Oh wait, before we do that, let me bring in my handy dandy little timer here. So just how fast it is of that easy and fast part I was talking about. Come on up here to file, go to site manager, I'm going to go to new site. And you don't really have to do it this way, but I'm going to keep things permanent in here, at least for this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one a name. And you can name it whatever you want. And over here, put in your host name. Now, if you are given a host name like ftp.mydomainname.com or whatever, or www, then you do not want to put in any prefix. You want to leave off the ftp. Dot or the www. Dot and only put in the domain part dot com or dot net or whatever your host was. And this is information you get, by the way, from your web hosting service when you first purchase your hosting account. Now under port, this is where I got a little hairy for me. I put in port 22. That's what you're supposed to do with secure transfer or for the SFTP. But that did not work for me, so I contact my hosting company, which is what you want to do if it doesn't work for you. And they told me, well, for me, I need a different number, 7978. Now here under protocol, hit that drop down, go to SFTP. And the rest of the stuff here is just like you would normally log in to your normal FTP account. Under login type, I'm going to go with normal. And under user and password, just put in the username and password that was given to you by your hosting account. And that's what I'm going to do now, copying and pasting. Now, whenever you're copying and pasting like I do, then you want to make sure that you're not adding any additional white marks or blank spaces to the beginning or to the end of that password or username. And you can just put whatever comments you want in there and click on connect. And you'll know that you're connected securely by down here in the lower right corner, you'll see a little padlock there. And that is how quick and easy it is to set up your secure file transfer or SFTP using the free FileZilla FTP client. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.